shaka zulu bashorunga ranavalo majanka maino these four had many things in common they were royal and the one who was not was more than a king and they were seen as either hero or villain or both how did they all meet their end imagine a man who killed and pounded his own wife in place of a deer because her name sounds familiar to a deer or the ruler who suffered his whole kingdom for a year after his mother died of dysentery Gidi was born to a royal family but was an illegitimate son according to the customs of the Zulu people because his parents were not married at the time of his pregnancy which is how he got the name Shaka. Shaka is a reminder of the rejection his mother met as a result of the unwanted pregnancy. Firstly, his father denied the pregnancy and said his mother had a sickness called Isi Shaka. His mother clan believed this as well. He rejected the name as much as he could, but since childhood, the name had stuck over his original name Gidi. Instead of calling him Ishishaka, they twisted it to Shaka because it would be risky to call a king that can order a pregnant woman's stomach to be sliced sick. The stigmatization he faced when he was young would shape his life a lot. He grew up to be a brutal leader and he was famous to have rehabbed his army, developed some tactics which his army used in wars with which they forged several villages into a kingdom called Zulu Kingdom. His capital was Kwabulawayo, which means where they are killed. People deemed unfit to live were brought to Kwabulawayo to be killed. This included short men deemed useless as they would not be able to see approaching enemy from distance. Similarly, his soldiers who had wounds on their backs after a battle, as this means they had been running from the enemy when they got the wound and anyone who went against his will. Shaka saved his soldiers from the evils of marriage, which includes weakness. He did this by restraining them from marriage. Maybe due to his harsh past, but his brutality had no limit because there were all these discussions about whether he really did some evil things such as slicing a pregnant woman's belly open just because he wants to know what goes on when someone is pregnant. In another event, he ordered a man's eye to be taken out but whatever the truth is about both events, it is a reflection of him. In 1829, his mother Nandi died of dysentery and 10 maidens were buried alive with her to care for her in the afterlife. And of course, this is not an exclusive case because similar traditions are found in ancient cultures around the world. What's worst is the fact that Shaka ordered a year of mourning that included all meek to be poured away. No crops should be planted and all pregnant women were killed along with their husbands. Cows were not spared from this. It is estimated that more than 7,000 Zulus were killed within that mourning period. His male counterpart in Oyo, called Basharonga, in his case, he didn't forge an empire but technically seized control of it as he successfully dethroned and dethroned three kings in the space of six months, five kings in total, before he was defeated by the fifth. He was instrumental to many victories for your heart in his time, and he protected his people from cruel, powerful people. Prince Labisi was his first victim. He was nominated to be king, but Ga was killing his friends and supporters. He was not allowed into the palace as well. 
At the end, he had to commit suicide after spending 17 days as a king to be. Ga installed another as king called Awonbyoju with the agreement that Awonbyoju would pay homage to him every day. But after 130 days, the king stopped. Therefore, Ga killed him and installed Abuluaji as king. This trend went on and on to the fifth king called Abiodu. At this time, the tributes were no longer paid to the king but to Ga. He appointed his sons, friends, and allies to administer all important major towns. The new king, Abiodu, thought it was wise to marry his only daughter to Ga, probably because he thought it would deter him from attacking his father-in-law. But on one unfortunate day, Ga needed a deer for one of its chants. A deer in Oyo is called Agbori, and his new wife, daughter of Abiodun, is called Agboi. Ga looked at both names and saw they were so similar. Therefore, Ga killed Abiodun's daughter and pounded her for the charm. This happened around the 1700s. Around the same time, in the East African island of Madagascar was a queen called Ranavalu Majanka, who reduced half of Madagascar's population by 50%. She was not from the bloodline that ruled before, but she was the king's wife. Her husband was King Radama. When he was alive, he embraced westernization by allowing Europeans into the land. They builded schools, traded, and Christianity was also growing. Ranavalu firmly opposed all this even before her reign. When the king died without an heir, she quickly gathered support from the priest who declared her as the person the god had destined to be their next ruler in place of the king's nephew called Rakatobe. This was not enough, so she got the support of Adra Mihaja, a young army officer who all helped enthrone her. Immediately she became the ruler. She killed all her rivals, including Rakatobe, the king's nephew. She also locked Rakatobe's mother away and stabbed her to death. The royal members were killed in general. And later, Adria Mihaja, the young army officer, was executed as well. She launched a great campaign against Europeans present on her territories, and she even beheaded some and put their heads on pikes, lining them up around beaches so that it can serve as a warning to others coming in. His people, who were already Christians, were beaten, tortured, Stabbed, pushed from cliffs, poisoned, beheaded, with their relatives made to watch the brutal death scenes. Our cruelty was not limited to this category of people, but the general population. For example, she ordered road construction across the jungle with little supplies, hunting expeditions where thousands of people died of exhaustion starvation and malaria and of the four people in this video it is only the minors that didn't massacre their own people sometimes i wonder if they should be included in this video but of course they did few things that could make them contest as either hero or villain the male army of dahomey called them mino meaning our mothers but a Beninese professor described them as witches. They were named Dahomey Amazon after a ruthless Greek goddess by the Europeans who witnessed their reign as queen. And yes, they were queen, just that the king does not have affairs with them. Apart from the popular fact that they raided smaller villages for slaves which is of course a general theme of the continent then. They were known to be brutal and merciless with their captives. 
in one event. A visitor narrated his experience watching a newly recruited minor beard a man, then calmly caught the last flesh that still attached the head to the trunk. She then squeezed the blood off her weapon and swallowed it. Of the four, Shakazulu was assassinated by his brothers towards the end of the mourning period of his mother. Before he died, he told his brother, Tigane, hey brother, you kill me, thinking you will rule, but the swallows will do that. Afterwards, Tigane took control of the kingdom but couldn't hold it for long, mostly due to the power of the white invaders. As for Basharunga, after killing King Abiodun's daughter, he was killed with the assistance of several warlords recruited from around Yoruba land. Not long after his death, Oyo tribute Spain states started rebelling one after the other, and all seceded from the control of Oyo and even blocked the supply of horses to Oyo, which weakened the empire was eventually shattered around 120 years later. Ranavalo was the only one who died in a sleep aged 83. Although, even after her death, she still haunts her people as thousands of people died at her funeral with an accidental explosion which occurred at this ceremony. Her son took over and embraced the modernization brought by the Europeans. Around 70 years later, the French took over the territory and started their colonization. As for the Minos, they were disbanded after losing war to the French. Some of them were killed in battle, while others lived till they died of natural causes.